Well, I think we were treated then to a, a very uh, passionate and insightful personal journey um, from Professor Hill over uh, the Conservative government's 11-year tenure. And he made a point at the beginning, which is a similar point that Kim Beasley made about the inherent flexibility of navies, but also that strategic planners, no matter how good they are, will never be able to predict um, all the future scenarios. And so the case in point was that both um, Kim Beasley and Robert Hill were blessed that we had a navy that comprised a balanced force. We'll now move on to questions. I think we all understand the business rules here, and I, we only have about 11 minutes. Uh, so we have uh, a number of our assistants here walking around the room with microphones, and I actually can see someone right at the very back up there. Neil James, Australia Defence Association. Um, Robert, Some things I was never change. Just, just like old times. Um, I was somewhat intrigued in your description when you, uh, that you didn't mention your own defence capability review, which, uh, which basically fixed all the mistakes of the 2000 white paper and incorporated the East Timor experiences which weren't in that white paper and led us to basically um, the Navy in particular that we have today and will have in the, uh, in the future despite the, uh, uh, what the 2009 and uh, 2013 white paper said. Uh, my argument would be your... 2003 Defence Capability Review actually set the Navy up for the next uh, 25 or 30 years and I was just a bit puzzled why you, uh, why you didn't actually mention the Capability Review. Um, well, we did do a number of updates. Is that working? Yeah. A number of um, updates. Um, but um, well, it was very nice of you to say that, but... Uh, in some ways, what I was doing was, was still implementing the guidance that was given through the, the two, our 2000 uh, white paper. Um, so the point I, why didn't I talk about the updates? Because I was talking about the white, the white paper. I, I do think that uh, within broad guidance, you do need to, to um, uh, you know, obviously fine tune from time to time, and that was the approach that uh, that I took. But I do, I uh, you know, I do think um, um, I'm not an expert, but just um, I, th I think the navy is reasonably set up. I think that the uh, uh, I hope the new government uh, purchases a, a fourth air warfare destroyer. Um, I think three is not going to be. Um, not going to be enough, but uh, I think they will be very useful. Some would say they're a little too focused on um, expeditionary type operations, but I think the Navy's already working ways in which they can meet a whole suite of different uh, different tasks, which shouldn't shouldn't surprise me. I've talked about the two bigger bigger ships. Um, it's just um, coincidence they've got a big flat deck and a, a ramp, so they give you all sorts of other potential capabilities in the future. Um, I saw the photo of that Japanese destroyer launch the other day. I've never seen a destroyer look more like an aircraft carrier. <laughs> but um, I think the, the new submarine project is going to be hugely challenging. I sort of hinted at that as we, uh, as we go, as I went along. Um, and um, the aircraft are being upgrade, updated. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 think, I think in terms of the, the major kit, the Navy is going to be pretty well served. Small but capable. Next question. Admiral Crane, right at the front. I'm sure we will go easier on you, sir, the next Chief of Navy. <laughs> Uh, Russ Crane, former Chief of Navy. Uh, Professor, thanks for your discussion. I, I was uh, really interested in your, your point about the Southern Oceans. Um, you've got a lot of knowledge of the Southern Oceans. You understand some of the, the, the significant issues that we could face in the Southern Oceans. Looking at our force structure today, um, do you perceive that maybe we've got a hole um, in our force structure? Is that an area where Navy should be looking in the future?
Well, I think it, you know, from a, a governance point of view, uh, it would have been better if we were able to send uh, ships that was designed for that uh, that task, and that principle would still apply apply today. Um, basically, we made the decision that we couldn't afford that that specific um, capability, and I suspect the government of today will make the make the same decision. So they will uh, they will expect. Uh, uh, the Navy to respond with not quite designed for operation uh, equipment, but I'm sure that they will do just as well in the future as they've done in the in the past. It's so easy to point to specific uh, needs and to argue for the design of specific responses, but what I try to suggest is I don't think that we're ever ever going to be able to afford that. I think we we need to build the flexibility into um, into the uh, the equipment that we've got, so we can meet a whole suite of different occurrences. Hello, yeah. uh, Daniel Ross. I'm just an interested party from your home state, Senator Hill, or ex Senator Hill. Um, I don't know if I can. Uh, you can answer the question on behalf of Kim, but you should be able to on your own behalf. In the political realm, what do you think was the worst mistake that you as a de defence minister made? Um, uh, because <laughs> like, I suppose, Kim Beasley's worst mistake or whatever, it lives on in its own right. Um, and I'd just be curious if you could pinpoint one thing that you... That, I should have done that better. <laughs> Ministers don't make mistakes. <laughs> they, uh, they just get voted out. It's, uh, um, no, well, I think that's too hard for me. Now, Kim gets... Uh, those who are anti the Collins blame Kim for the Collins. Um, but I'm not anti the Collins, so I'm not... I'm not um, I'm not blaming him. Um, uh, I might have to pass on. That's fine. Pass on pass that, here. I think. Yeah. Um, it's like hot seat. You can take a pass and we can move on to the next question. Yeah, I much prefer questions. What do you think you did well? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for others. Ask Neil James, he'll tell you what mistakes I made. Commodore Pietro. Good afternoon, Professor. Uh, Commodore Vincent Pietro, Commander Fleet Air Arm. Um, in your experience in Parliament and in Cabinet in particular, does the usefulness of navies in the exercise of naval diplomacy and maritime power projection wane in understanding and or enthusiasm in a government? And if so, um, how can navies do better to keep what they do in, in the parliament and the government's eye? Uh, well, I think it is true that um, Australian, the Australian community admire their defence force, but they... But, but, it's, but it's you and... Not us. I think it's a little bit different in the United States, for example, where where um, defence forces in, in embraced in a more obvious obvious way. Now, do you want that? I don't. I, you know, we we we're Australian. We're slightly different. Um, you will therefore probably be on occasion to feel that you're not um, adequately appreciated. That public don't understand that. Uh, you know the sacrifices that you make, which are, are not just um, in relation to the, to the operations, but in relation to family and the and the like. But you are appreciated, and and I don't think there's um, there's a lot more than you can do, other than to from an Australian perspective. You know, American perspective, you'd have a lot more parades and. and uh, and so forth, but with the Australian psyche, I think just continuing to do 
the job well is what the Australian people would want of you and I think that uh, you're appreciated a lot more than you might sometimes sometimes think. I guess in, in, in what I've just said is that there, there is a need, but I don't, don't necessarily think it's your task, it might be the task of government to ensure that there is um, um, a, pu a public education of what the, not just Navy, but what the Defence Forces do, just to ensure that they're not, um, they're not taken for granted. Uh, but I don't immediately see that there's more than more that we should expect of Navy to do to promote itself in the public eye. Well, we're right on 1700, so we're, uh, we're tracking right on for time here. Before I close the session, Professor, um, can I just uh, um, put a plug in for tomorrow morning um, where we have uh, an outstanding uh, team lined up, uh, a real bevy of experts, professors, Till, Dib and Percy, um, who will then um, set the scene for uh, the Chief of Davy again to make some closing comments, and that really will be the grand final for tomorrow. So I hope that everyone that's here now um, will think about that tonight and will we'll turn up tomorrow morning. Um, that does bring our session uh, this afternoon to a close, and, and it's been a, a wonderful session to have uh, such outstanding strategic political thinkers but exponents of the art um, that have been able to talk about their, um, uh, their experiences and, and in uh, your case, sir, some very personal experiences of your time um, as Minister. And uh, can I please ask, therefore, uh, everyone to join me and thank uh, in a normal fashion. <laughs>